Welcome to this short module on how to write a referral letter to either a GP, physiotherapist, osteopath, or even people like nutritionists. We're going to take a common approach so that you come across as professional and also that you can become part of the team when treating an injury holistically. So why refer clients? Well, one, the obvious one is red flags. There are lots of red flags, and if one appears with a client on presentation, it's important that you can refer them to the appropriate practitioner, whether that's a doctor, physiotherapist and osteopath, or even a third party expert, like a nutritionist, dietitian, running expert, or coach. That includes things like extrinsic conditions, if you believe something is technique based, it might be that you need to write a referral to a coach, for example. But that goes the same for intrinsic conditions. If you believe there's an underlying medical condition, something undiagnosed, maybe nutrition plays a part, sleep conditions. There are some intrinsic reasons where you will also need to seek expert advice. And finally, no progress or something that's worsening. Something might not appear as a red flag, but if you're not making progress after two or three sessions, my personal rule is my three session rule if there's no significant improvement, or if something's getting worse, then it's important that we refer our clients on for assessment and diagnosis by an appropriate professional. Remember, stay in your lane. This is not about losing clients. This is about gaining trust and doing the best for your clients. And believe me, by doing so, you will only gain respect, one, from your client and two, from the wider community, which will only help your business grow. So what are the mediums for writing a referral? And why is it so important? So for me, there are two main mediums that you should use, either a written referral via letter or a written one via email. Yes, you can talk via phone call, but I think it is much more professional and you will get a much better result if you write down all of the details of your referral. It is really important that we do this. One, so that we paint the full picture for the third party. Two, that we are professional in how we present this. And three, to form a written record of what we have referred, what we have found and what we have suggested for this client to do. So we're just going to talk through the information and structure of that referral, whether it be by letter or by email. They all contain the same seven common themes or topics. One is the salutation. How do we start the letter? What's important to put in there? Two, the purpose of the letter. Why are we writing to this person? Three, our client information, what they presented with the subjective data. Four, what we find on assessment. Five, what if anything we did in terms of treatment and what was the outcome of that? Six, why we're referring that client. And seven, how we close and thank the third party that we're talking to, which is also really important. And eight, we just need to consider your contact information as it differs in terms of how you present that as to whether you've sent a letter or an email. First of all, let's talk about salutation. So it's really important, especially in the case of a letter, that we start with the address. Your address should appear on the top right hand side of the letter. Whereas the address of the addressee, the person you're writing to, should appear below that on the left hand side. It's also important that you date the letter and that should appear under your address on the top left hand side. Then in terms of salutation, when we directly address the person, we need to address them appropriately. So we want to see dear and we want to include their title and name whether that's Dr. Bloggs, Ms. Bloggs, Mr. Blog, Mrs. Bloggs, 
it's important that we use their title. Remember, this is a professional letter here and not casual. So we're not using first names. If you're writing to an organization, for example, where you're not directing your referral to a specific doctor, a specific individual, that's when we would use the salutation to whom it may concern. And this may be the case if you're writing to a clinic, for example. If you don't know the name of the individual and it's not an organization, then we can also use dear sir or madam. In terms of an email, the difference here is that we start directly with the personal salutation. We're not including the address on the introduction of the email. In terms of the purpose of the letter, this is pretty straightforward as it's to refer your client and you just need to state what you're referring them for. So in the case of this referral, where I'm referring them to a doctor, I want them to assess and diagnose what's happening with this client. In terms of identifying your client, it's really important that you include their name, their date of birth and their address. As there may be many Jonathan Woods at this clinic, you want to ensure that they are addressing and seeking the right Jonathan Woods. So by including the date of birth and the address, it creates more of a unique identifier for this person. Next up is client information. And this is akin to our subjective information that we gather from our client. What did your client present with and what did they say? And remember to use quotation marks if you're quoting how they describe their pain. In this case, I talk about when my client presented, so make sure that you include dates and include all relevant information. What did they present with? Was it gradual or was it sudden? Was it a trauma? Or was it something that came about over time? How did they describe the condition? What descriptors did they use? What alleviating factors or worsening factors did they describe? This is where you include all of that subjective information that your client portrays to you when they present to you with an issue. Next, we move on to the assessment information. And this is where we want to put in the relevant objective data. We're not going to put in everything we saw on this client, but we want to put everything in that is relevant to the complaint for which you're referring. Again, we want to date when the assessment information is from, especially if you have done multiple sessions and that assessment data has changed, as you might describe several pieces of assessment data across several different days. Again, be specific and use descriptors, the professional terminology that we've shown you. Anterior, front of the body, posterior, back of the body, distal or proximal to the midline of the body. Use full words as opposed to abbreviations. ROM might mean range of motion to you, but may not be as clear to others. So it's really important that we describe everything accurately and clearly and do not assume that clients or referral addressee of this letter understands any abbreviations that you may use. The fifth section is treatment information. And again, I would use a paragraph for each session of treatment. In our first treatment session here, again, I date it. And on the second one, I put the second date in, one, so that the person can see how far apart these sessions were and also how long it's been since the last treatment. It is really important that we focus on what we did with this client and what the outcome was, what worked and what didn't, as that may give some clues to the person you're referring as to what's going on. Use the correct terminology for all muscles and also describe the techniques you use fully as opposed to using abbreviations. Again, using technical descriptors. If you saw inflammation on an area of the body, describe it accurately. You saw red inflammation proximal to the knee on the anterior side.
Our sixth section is the reason for referring. So you've described the client, you've described what they've presented with subjectively and objectively. You've then described the treatment you performed and what the outcome was. So based on all of that, why do you feel a referral is necessary? That's what this short paragraph is about. But be careful, do not diagnose or suggest a diagnosis. We are not able to diagnose and we are not suitably qualified to do so. And all you will do is lose professionalism and also lead perhaps the person you're referring as to what might be going on. So you need to be able to just present the information without biasing with diagnosis. Here, I describe the reason why I don't want to refer Mr. Jonathan Woods, which is although my client did feel improvement in terms of lumbar pain and stiffness, I feel like the dull throb in their leg has worsened. So I'm asking this doctor if they would appropriately assess and diagnose this client. And don't be afraid to ask whether or not sports massage is indicated for this client's condition. Get the approval you need to progress. And our final section is simply to close and thank. It's really important that we always thank the individual. One, for taking the time to read the referral letter, not just see the client. And two, to make sure you leave the door open if one, they require further information or two, any clarifications on the treatment you performed. Sign off yours sincerely and sign the letter in the case of a letter. In the case of an email, again, we're signing off yours sincerely, but it's actually in the signature of the email where you contain your contact information. So make sure it's very clear as to where this third party will be able to get back to you, whether it's by email, phone, or by address itself, by written word. You may also want to include a website in there in case this third party wants to refer other clients to you, see more about what you do, or simply just familiarize themselves with your process. Remember, this is about being a team player. This is your first outlet on the onset of the treatment for this client, which may end up needing a multidisciplinary team. This is your first outlet to show your professionalism to those third parties and the level of care and diligence that you apply for your clients. So don't let yourself down, take your time and take these top tips on writing a clear, concise and professional referral letter.